One thing that I like to do at this point is to just do a reset to make sure we can go to the home position and get back. So to do that, there's another shortcut you can take in the program. Again, you break the program. Control brake, F6 to get down into the immediate window, and you write go to space 1000, which is the rewind routine. The tracker will go back to the home position. First, the elevation will go down. It'll bang against the stop. In this case, I'm going to let it run the whole time and not shortcut it so that we can watch all routine routine work. While it's rewinding, I'm going to get ready to put the instruments on the, on the shade disc yet. See the elevation will come back up. Now we'll rotate back towards the home position, which is facing north in the northern hemisphere. And it's reached the home position. It's lined back up. The program will now carry, check the time. It'll realize that, oh, sun is up above solar it's not below the horizon it should be tracking and will automatically go back to its position where it was and as the nip comes back around into alignment then we just have to wait for a quick update and we should be back on the sun which we are perfect and the tracker is tracking. If we were just using a nip, we would hook the cable up to it and we'd be done. Today we're setting up a whole station. So we're going to have diffuse and direct, uh, diffuse, direct, and global. To measure the diffuse, we've got a black and white pyranometer that we're going to put on the shaded side of the shade disc kit. Now you'll notice on the shade disc kit, we have some taller standoffs and some shorter standoffs. The taller standoffs go to the 848, which is a shorter instrument than the SPP. So we're going to start. The 848 normally does not use a shield, but when it's in a ventilator, it uses a shield. So we're going to start by uh, removing three of the screws so that we'll be able to add a shield. And the way we want to do that is we generally want the connector in the back, but we want to mount the tracker here. So we'll line this up for now, just to start off like that. And what we're going to want to do um, is take a small screwdriver and we're going to remove three of the standard hemisphere screws. This is so that we can put the shield on using screws that will hold the shield in place after we've mounted it. Next, we're going to lower the leveling screws pretty much all the way. And we're going to place it in the shaded side. We're going to use the 532, take our mounting screws and their washers. And we're not going to do this tight, we're just going to put these in loosely for now to hold the, to put the instrument in place. Again, we're not going to do that tight yet because we're going to want to level the instruments before we begin. Next, we're going to take our SPP clarinometer. This is going to measure the global. We're going to remove the standard shield that comes with it because the ventilator built into the SDK uses a larger diameter shield. So 
with the shield and the screws. We're going to use the screws for the shield. We want to store in case we don't want it later. Probably put that in the storage case that came with the instrument. Again, we're going to lower all the leveling screws. towards the back and use our mounting screws so it doesn't move. It's a good idea if you haven't already to make sure you record the serial numbers and the um, and the sensitivity of the instruments that you're mounting because once they're in the ventilator it is harder to read although with the ventilators we do have clear so that you can see through them. Some people will line this with other materials. But at this point, we're ready to go. What we want to do next, we're ready to set this and close it all up. We want to be sure that everything is level. So we want to check the leveling screws. And that's why we didn't tighten our mounting screws tight yet. And we're going to level. We want to level it till the spirit bubble is level. Once it's level, we can tighten down the leveling screws, the mounting screws, so that it won't move. We don't have to go real tight on these. We want to check the level again when all is said and done. Because the mounting screws may adjust it just a bit. We'll do the same thing with the black and white. Okay, so with both levels set, we're now ready to close them up. We want to take our rings, place them on with the opening in the back. The opening, of course, is for the cables, which we need to attach next. So we take our cable, can't get at it because it's tight, you can always loosen the ring, make sure it's snug, and then add the ring. Take our cable. The cables may, may not have been supplied by Epley. Unless specified, we just supply the mating connector. We'll check the level. And we're ready for the shield. We take the large shield for the SPP. Our three, level, three shield screws. Again, you don't want to tighten them all down until they're all in. Same for the black and white. And the black and white, remember we didn't come with a shield originally, so we have this special shield with these special screws. We remove the other three holes and these longer shield screws. One thing you want to be sure is to make sure that the shield is fairly snug against the plastic so that the air, the maximum air flow goes up over the dome to keep the domes clean. At some point we'll finish this up with the shading. 